in this session we are going to deal with the, the second set of data processing instructions first set of data processing instruction we have already seen in the previous lecture if you want to have more details regarding those instructions you can uh, visit my previous lecture so that you will be getting the understanding regarding those instructions so in this lecture we are going to deal with another set of data processing instructions first of all bitwise logical operations so uh, in the previous lecture we have seen arithmetic operations such as add subtract etc in this session we are going to start with the bitwise operation first one is and operation so and r0 comma r1 comma r2 so what operation will be done here r0 equal to r1 and r2 right so if you are taking an example let us take r1 equal to 0 x f f f f you are ending with r2 so r2 is having 0 0 0 0 so what will happen when you are ending 1 with the 0 you will be getting 0 so all the bits will be 0 and the result will be stored back to r0 so this is a binary representation so fffff means all 32 bits will be 1 so that is present in r1 and r2 is having all zeros when you are ending these two bitwise and the operation will be done so 1 and 0 is 0 again 1 and 0 0 so like that all the bits will be 0 and that result will be stored on to r0 so this is a bitwise logical and operation similarly you can perform bitwise or right so it will be same as this only thing is that your operation will be changing r1 or r2 will be done again it is bitwise or then one more instruction is there eor eor stands for xor operation so xor operation means what 1 xor 1 will be 0 0 xor 0 will be 0 right so when r1 and r2 are having two same numbers you will be getting the result as 0 whenever any bit is different when you are performing xor operation of say 1 xor 0 or 0 xor 1 you will be getting 1 as the result so these are the three bitwise logical operations next another one special type of bitwise logical operation is known as bic bic stands for bit clear operation so this instruction is used for clearing a particular bit in a register so if you are writing bic r0 comma r1 comma r2 what operation will be done here r0 equal to r1 and not of r2 r0 equal to r1 and not of r2 let us take one example let us take r1 equal to all ones and consider that i need to clear only these two bits that is the zeroth bit and the second bit bit number is starting from 0 1 2 3 etc so in my case i need to clear only the zeroth bit and the second bit of r2 using bit clear so what should i do so if you want to do like that you should take r2 in such a way that only those two corresponding bits in r2 should be one all the other bits should be zeros right so you should select r2 in such a way that whichever bits you need to clear so the corresponding bit in r2 should be 1 all the other bits should be 0 and in bit clear what is the operation done and of not of r2 so this should be r2 when you are taking not of r2 what will happen all the zeros will be replaced with 1 and 1s will be replaced with 0 so what you are getting 1 1 1 1 and whichever bit you need to clear only those two bits will be zeros when you are taking the not of r2 right so r2 should be selected in such a way that whichever bit you need to clear those two bit alone should be one all the other bit should be zeros so when you are taking not of r2 what will happen those two ones will be made as zeros and all the other bits will be made as ones and in bit clear what will happen r1 will be handed with the not of r2 so uh, r1 is this 
will be ended with not of what so what will happen the corresponding bits which are in it clear will be ended with the zeros so the resultant will be get you will be getting like this so that the corresponding bits in the result will be zeros and that will be stored in our right so bit clear instruction is used for clearing a particular bit in a register so whichever bit you need to clear in a register right that corresponding bit in r2 r2 will be the second operand so that corresponding bit in r2 should be set as one all the other bits should be zeros right so you uh, r2 content should be this so what will be the actual operation done here r1 will be ended with the not of r2 not of r2 means so whichever bits you are uh, set in r2 that will be made as zero all the other bits will be set so when you are ending r1 with the not of r2 you can see that the corresponding bits those bits you need to clear only those bits will be zeros all the other bits will be ones so this is bit clear operation or BIC instruction. So this is the hexadecimal representation. So when R1 will be FFFF, R2 will be 0, 1, 0, 1. That means hexadecimal of 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5. So when you are multi, uh, so when you are performing bit clear operation on R1 and R2, your R0 will be FFFFF. Last one will be 1010 that is a so ff a so this is how you are performing the bit clear operation next one is register movement operations so for that first instruction you are using is move instruction so move r0 comma r2 what does it mean content of register r2 will be moved to r0 content of register r2 will be moved to r0 so let us take R2 is having this hexadecimal value. When you are executing this content of R2, that is this value will be moved to R0. So this is a corresponding binary representation. So similarly, there is another instruction known as move n. Move n stands for move negative or move negate. What does it mean? In normal move, you will be moving content of R2 to R0. But in move negative, what you are doing is you will perform not of R2 that is complement of R2 will be performed or not of R2 will be performed that will be moved to R0 that is negation operation will be done on R2 or complement operation will be done on R2 and that will be moved to R0 so an example is like this you will see the binary equivalent so R2 equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. that is 0, 0, 0, 2 so when you are performing move negate what will happen complement of this will be taken that is what all the zeros will be changed to ones all ones will be changed to zeros so you will be getting f f f f 110 means 1101 means it is d right so when you are giving mvn of r0 comma r2 r2 will be getting f f f f d right r0 will be getting f f f f d that means negated or complemented value of R2 will be moved to R0. So this is the complemented value of R2. Next one is comparison instructions. There are certain comparison instructions. First one we will start with the CMP. CMP stands for compare instruction. So this instruction check whether two numbers are equal or two numbers are uh, 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 one number is less than the other one like that so those comparisons will be done by compare instruction right so the operation will be r1 minus r2 and here you need to keep something in mind based on this subtracted value condition code will be set cc means condition code what are the condition codes n is at cv so these are the condition code present in cpsr so based on this operation these condition codes will be set and one more important thing is that this comparison instructions all the comparison instructions will not generate a result result will not be generated that is why only two operands are there right so if for compare operation r1 minus r2 will be performed 
and based on the operation condition code fields will be condition code field in cpsr will be set or clear but result will not be stored let us see one example right let us take r1 equal to 0, 0, 0, 2, r2 equal to 0, 0, 2. you are performing compare operation so what will happen r1 minus r2 so when you are subtracting r1 minus r2 that is 2 minus 2 what you will get result will be 0 but that result will not be stored anywhere right and what is the result actual result 0 so since the result is 0 0 flag will be set but your actual result will not be stored so this is a binary equivalent you are subtracting 2 minus 2 so 0 flag will be set let us take another example so here i am uh, taking r1 as 2 r2 as 3 so 2 minus 3 will be done so what will happen 2 minus 3 means you will be getting negative 1 as the result but again this result will not be stored right so what is the result what will be the actual result it is not stored but what is the result 2 r1 minus r2 that is 2 minus 3 so the result will be negative 1 so since the result is negative negative flag will be set right this is a binary equal so in this operation zero flag was set in this operation negative flag will be set but your result will not be stored anywhere only the condition code fields will be set so previously we have seen cmp compare instruction that is this is cmn cmn stands for compare negative that means the operation will be r1 plus r2 in cmp it was r1 minus r2 in cmn it is r1 plus r2 again the same thing condition only the condition code fields will be set result will not be stored so let us take one example r1 equal to 0 r2 equal to 0 so what is the operation r1 plus r2 so when you are adding 0 and 0 what you will get result will be 0 but it is not stored but since result is 0 0 flag will be set this is a binary equal let us take one more example here you are adding all fff fffs with one so what will happen you will be getting zero with the carry one when you are adding all ffs with one you will be getting zero as a result and the carry will be generated as one so what will happen carry flag will be set but result will not be stored you should keep in mind but carry flag will be set so here you have seen in this uh, when you are taking r1 and r2 as 0 0 0 flag will be set in this example carry flag will be set so in cmn the operation done will be r1 plus r2 and corresponding condition code field will, see, will be set next comparison instruction is tst tst stands for test instruction test and the basic uh, um, use of this test instruction is it is used for testing whether a single bit is 1 or 0. It is used for testing whether a single bit is 1 or 0 in a register. And what is the actual operation? TST R1, R2 means R1 and R2 will be performed. R1 and R2. So here also since it is a comparison instruction, result will not be stored right so the condition code fields will be set based on r1 and r2 we'll see one example you are taking r1 as 1111 you are ending with 00001 so what will be the result bit twice ending will be done so what will be happening 1 and 1 will be 1 all the others will be zeros right so you'll be getting the result as 00001 but again you should keep in mind result will not be stored but since your data is 001 what will happen to a zero flag zero flag will be clear why because the result of this operation is not one since you are adding one and one you will be getting one so the result of operation is non-zero so zero flag will be cleared since it is not zero so if zero flag is clear Right? So here what I am doing, I am testing 
what, what is the use of this instruction you are testing a single bit is 1 or 0 so by using this test instruction for example i am going to test whether this last bit is 0 to bit is 1 so what should i do you should select r2 in such a way that only that bit will be 1 should be 1 all the other bit should be zeros only that bit whichever bit you are going to check the corresponding bit in r2 should be 1 all the other bit should be zeros and you should perform test so when you are performing test what will happen r1 will be added with r2 right and if since this bit is 1 what will happen result will be 1 so since the result will be 1 zero flag will be cleared zero flag will be cleared so you can identify that whichever bit you are checking that bit was one since the bit was one you can identify that your result is one right so this is a hexadecimal equivalent fffff and r2 equal to one so in a randing zero flag will be cleared so you can identify that this bit whichever bit you are checking that bit was one we'll take another example in this example i am going to check the same bit but here that bit which i am checking is zero right so that bit which i am going to test it is actually zero so i am going to find out whether that bit is zero or one so what should i do whichever bit i am interested in checking the corresponding bit in r2 should be one as i have done here all the other bits should be zeros right so r2 should be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. so when you are performing test r1 and r2 will be done and here what will happen 0 and 0 0 and 1 will be 0 1 and 0 will be 0 so the result will be all zeros here the result was last bit alone will be 1 all the other bits will be 0 so 0 flag was clear so here since the last bit which you are checking is 0 what will happen what will be the result 0 and 1 will be 0 so all the bits value will be zeros so since the result is 0 0 flag will be set so since 0 flag is set you can identify that whichever bit you are checking was a 0 bit right here 0 flag was not set so you can identify that whichever bit you are checking was a bit 1 here zero flag is set so you can identify that whichever bit i was checking was a zero bit so this is how you are testing whether a single bit or more number of bits whichever bit i need to check like this those bits should be made as ones right so whichever bit you are checking is one or zero that operation is uh, done by using test instruction so tst stands for test next one is teq teq means test for equivalence previous one was test it was used for testing a particular bit generally it is used for checking a particular bit is one or zero here test for equivalence means it is used for testing whether the two numbers are equal that means the two register values are equal it is used for checking that and the operation done is r1 xor r2 r1 xor r2 that means 1 xor 1 will be 0 0 xor 0 will be 0 so whenever both the numbers are equal your result will be 0 we will take an example r1 equal to 11110 r2 is also the same number then you are performing the test for equality equivalence so what will happen r1 x or r2 will be done and since both are equal and when you are performing x or operation bitwise zero flag will be set so whenever zero flag is set on teq you can identify that both the numbers are equal so this is a hexadecimal representation fe x or fe will set the zero flag similarly we we'll take another example so here r1 is fe r2 is ff all ffs here fffff e right so both the numbers are not equal one is fe another one is ff so what will happen since both the numbers are not equal when you are performing xor zero flag will not be set zero flag will be cleared so when the zero flag is clear 
you can identify that both the numbers are not same when the zero flag is set you can identify that both the numbers are same so this is a corresponding equivalent so fe x or ff since both the numbers are not equal zero flag will be cleared so you can identify that it is not same right so again as i told before test for test uh, for test instruction and teq instruction also result will not be stored so for all the comparison instructions such as CMP, CMN, TST and TEQ, for all these four comparison instructions, result will not be stored. Only condition code fields in the CPSR such as NZCV, those fields only will be updated based on the operation done. Next one is shifted register operations or shifted register operands. First type of shifting is known as LSL. LSL stands for logic shift left. Right. Logic shift left. So you can perform logic shift by 0 to 31 bits. That means the whole hexadecimal number or the whole 30 bit number will be shifted towards left by 1 unit. We will take one example. I am writing add R3, R2, R1 LSL hash 3. What does it mean? What is the operation done here? R3 equal to, first operand is R2. So, R3 equal to R2 plus, what will be the second operand? Second operand is a shifted register. So, which register value are shifting? Register R1. How many times you are shifting? Three times. In which direction? Left direction, LSL. Right. So, R1 will be shifted towards left by 3 units. So when you are shifting a number towards left by 3 unit, what is happening? That number will be multiplied by 2 raised to number of time shift. I have already told in my previous lecture. right? So that number that is stored in R1 will be multiplied by 2 raised to 3 units when you are performing left shift by 3. So what is the actual operation done here? R3 equal to R2 plus R1 into 2 raised to 3. 2 raised to 3 is nothing but 8. So, the operation done here is R3 equal to R2 plus 8 into R1. Right. So, whenever you are left shifting a number, by 1 unit if you are left shifting, you are multiplying it by 2. Here, 3 times I am shifting towards left. Uh, towards left. So, you are multiplying by 2 raised to 3. So, this is left shift. Similarly, you are having uh, logic shift left. So, LSL stands for logic shift left. That is left shifting operation you are performing. Next one is logic shift right. So, it is a opposite of logic shift left. Instead of logic shift left, you are performing the shift in the right. Next one is arithmetic shift right. Arithmetic shift right, what does it mean? The number will be shifted towards right, but the sign bit will be preserved that is arithmetic shift right then rotate rotate means the uh, instead of uh, left shift or right shift you will be rotating the number and the rotated number whichever number is going out it will come back to the msb position more details we will see in the next slide now you only understand the names next one is rotate right extended so here it is same as rotate but after rotating, the rotated bit will go and occupy the carry location. So now, in the next slide, we will see more details of all these five shifts. So first one is logic shift left. So here I am writing logic shift left hash 5. What does it mean? Let us take this is my number. If I am giving LSL hash 5, you will be shifting your number towards left by 5 decimal. 5 binary places or 5 units and what will happen to the uh, uh, data in those 5 positions when you are shifting left those 5 positions will be or that locations will be updated with the 0 values it will be that vacant spaces will be written with the 0 all the remaining numbers will be there so the msb 5 bits will go out right and in the lsb position 5 zeros will be appended. 
Similarly, in the case of LSR means it is just opposite of this. Here you are shifting a number towards left by 5 unit. In this case, you are shifting a number towards right by 5 units. Logic shift right. So, what will happen? Your 5 LSBs will be going out. LSB means lower significant bits. 5 lower significant bits will be, go, uh, will be shifted out. You, can, uh, you cannot recover that. And in the MSB position, zeros will be appended. So, in LSL and LSR, you can see that wherever shifting has done, the remaining vacant places will be appended with zeros. You should keep in mind, it will be appended with zeros in LSL and LSR. Next one is arithmetic shift right, hash 5. So, what is the difference between logical shift right and arithmetic shift right? In logical shift right and arithmetic shift right, in both the cases, right shifting will be done. Right? But what is the difference? In logical shift right, the value vacant spaces will be filled with zeros or appended with zeros. But in arithmetic shift right, the vacant spaces will be filled with the MSB bit. So, what will be the actual MSB bit? MSB bit is nothing but the sign bit. Right? So, if the MSB bit is 0, that means it is a positive number. If the MSB bit is 1, that means it is a negative number. So, whichever MSB bit is there, if it is a positive number, it will be zeros. If it is a positive number, all the vacant spaces will be filled with zeros. That means sign bit will be preserved even when you are shifting it towards right. And so, that is shown here. If it is a negative number, MSB bit will be 1. So, when you are performing the right shift, arithmetic right shift, that 1 will be filled in all those vacant spaces. That means here also sign bit will be preserved. So, since it is a positive number, MSB bit will be 0. So, all the vacant spaces will be filled with sign bit that is 0 bit since it is a positive number. Here, since it is a negative number, MSB bit will be 1. So, after shifting, all the vacant spaces will be filled with 1 because it is a negative number. So, what is the difference between arithmetic shift right and logical shift right? Both the cases right shift will be done, but in logical shift right, all the vacant spaces will be filled with zeros, even when your number is positive or negative. So, irrespective of your sign bit, the vacant spaces will be filled with zeros. But in the case of arithmetic shift right, the same right shifting will be done, but the vacant spaces will be filled with the signed bit, sign bit or sign bit will be preserved. So, if it is a positive number, the vacant spaces will be filled with zeros. If it is a negative number, the vacant spaces will be filled with ones. Next type of shifting operation is known as rotate right. So, in rotation, what is the difference between rotate right and the logical shift right? In logical shift right, whichever bit you are shifted, that will be uh, you cannot get it back. It will be shifted out of the register. But here in rotate right, it is not like that way. If you are rotating right a number by one unit, the LSB most bit will be going out. That bit will be taken to the LSB, MSB position of the same number. So, the number will be rotated right. How many ever times you are rotating right, those bits which are going out will be taken to the MSB most bit. So, when you are shifting this uh, number by 1 towards right, rotating the number towards right by 1 unit, the last bit will be occupied in the MSB bit. When you are shifting, when you are rotating the number once more towards right, what will happen? The first bit will be going to the MSB and the previous bit which you have shifted will go to the 30th position. In the 31st position, your first bit will come. If you are shifting one more time, your second bit will occupy in the 31st bit, first bit will be there in the 30th bit and 0th bit will be there in the 29th bit. So, whenever you are rotating towards right, whichever bit is going out will be again going back and occupy in the MSB most bit. So, if you are shifting one uh, bit, that bit will occupy the MSB most bit. When you are shifting the next bit, that bit, bit will be occupying the MSB bit 
and the remaining data will be shifted right by one unit. So that is the difference between rotate right and LSR. In the logic shift right, whichever bit you are shifting out cannot be recovered, it will go out. But here in rotate right, whichever bit you are rotating, that bit will be accommodated in the MSB most bit. Next one is rotate right extended. So it is an extension of rotate right. What is the extension? In the rotate right operation, whichever bit you are shifting out, that will be occupied in the MSB position. But here what will happen? Carry is also taken care. So whenever you are shifting a number, that shifted number will go and occupy in the carry bit. And whatever number was there in the carry will be shifted to the 31st bit. When, when you are shifting one more time, the first bit will be taken to the carry bit and if carry is there, that bit will go to the 31st bit. Previous carry will be shifted to 30th bit. Right. So in rotate right, whenever you are shifting a number, that number will be occupied in the carry bit. And previous carry bit will be taken to the MSB bit and the other number, whichever you, it was present in the register, will be shifted right by one unit. So this is the difference between rotate right extended and rotate right. In rotate right, whichever number is shifted out will be occupied or accommodated in the MSB most bit. But in rotate right extended, whichever bit you are shifting out will be accommodated in the carry bit. And the previous carry bit will be taken to the MSB most bit. And whichever number was there in the uh, bits from 0 to 31 will be right shifted by one unit. So whenever rotation is taking place, last bit, LSB bit will be accommodated in the carry bit. So these are the five types of shifts available in ARM. So we will see one example for that, the previous example itself. So add R0, R1, LSL hash 1. What is the operation done here? R0 equal to R1 plus R1 left shifted by 1. R0 equal to R1 plus R1 left shifted by 1. Right. So let us take one example. This is R1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Right. That will be added with R1 left shifted by 1. What is R1 left shifted by 1? This, this is R1. When you are left shifting R1 by 1 unit, you will get 0, 0, 1, 0. This 1 has been moved to the next binary position and here 0 has been appended. Since it is left shift, how many ever times you are shifting towards left? Since it is logical shift left, 0 will be appended. So here 0 was appended. So R1 plus R1 left shifted by 1, what you will get? 1 plus 2, you will get 3. So 1 plus 2 will get 3. So this is how you are performing the logical shift operation. So what was the uh, operation done? R1 plus R1 left shifted by 1. So what is R1 plus? What is R1 left shifted by 1? It is nothing but 2 into R1. So R1 plus 2 into R1. What is that? R1 plus 2 into R1? It is equal to 3 into R1. So this example we have seen already. right? So let us take one example and try to write an instruction for that. I am giving you a uh, condition like this. If 0 flag is equal to 1, then you should perform addition of R2 plus R3 into 4. Addition of R2 plus R3 into 4. That result should be taken to R1. Right. If 0 flag is 1, you should perform addition, you should perform addition of R2 plus R3 into R4. The whole result will be taken to R1. So how will you check whether 0 flag is set? You should use the condition codes. What are the condition codes? Condition codes are EQ, NE, etc. etc. 16 condition codes we have seen in the first lecture. You can go through that. So here I am going to check the 0 flag. And what I am going to check? Whether 0 flag is equal to 1. So which condition code you should use? EQ. And what operation you should do? If 0 flag is set, you should perform the addition. Right? So how will you write? Add EQ. Right? So add EQ, what does it mean? Whenever 0 flag is set, 
addition will be performed. So EQ checks the zero flag. When zero flag is set, addition operation will be done. Right? And why this S is there? Your status flag, I need to set the status flag also. All I need to update the status flag also. So my instruction is add EQS. What does it do? Whenever zero flag is set, addition will be performed and status flag will be updated. And what addition you need to perform? First operand should be the result. So here what is the result? R1. Right? So result should be there in R1. So my first operand will be the destination register. So according to this condition, it should be R1. So this is the first operand. Second one, what is the, what does this represent? This is a, these two are the source operands. It is three address formatting. First operand will be the destination. These two will be the source. So what will be the first source operand? R2. This is the first source operand. First data will be here. So R1, R2. This is first operand. Which should be the second operand? It is a second operand should be R3 into 4. So how will you perform into 4? You can use logical shift left. Right. So what you are doing? How many times you need to shift it? In order to multiply it by 4? two times so four is nothing but two raised to two so you are shifting r3 towards left by two units so you will be multiplying r3 by four so that is what is written r3 comma lsl hash two so r3 comma lsl hash two means you are shifting r3 towards left by two units when you are shifting r3 towards left by two units means you are multiplying R3 by 2 raised to 2. It is nothing but 4. So what is the operation done here? R2 equal to R1 equal to destination operand is R1. So R1 equal to R2 plus R3 left shifted by 2. Operation will be R1 equal to R2 plus R3 left shifted by 2. Right? So, this is the instruction corresponding to this function. Right? So, from this extra, uh, instruction, we can identify how powerful your ARM microprocessor is. All this operation, that is multiplication, addition, as well as checking for a condition is implemented by using a single instruction. Right? So, more than one operation is performed in the single instruction itself. That is a beauty of arm instruction set so it is a single instruction used for performing this operation right thank you so by this we will come and into the data processing instructions